Hello, everyone. Apologies for the delay. I was trying to figure out a couple of stuff. Frankly, I actually tried to do something cool, or at least that I thought would be cool. You know, I felt like, oh, hey, why don't I do this one thing where, you know, I go into like a black screen after everything's said and done and just, you know, pull out this brand new surprise here. And uh, it didn't really quite work. Yeah, what are these? Heck, I look pretty cool, right? And, uh, unfortunately, well, this wasn't as cool as I wanted it to be, you know. Okay, so, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we didn't quite get, like, that cool entrance, but, yeah. I'm just so happy that I have it. Because now I can do cool stuff. Let me turn up that volume. What do you guys think I've been working on? been working on the solo and the intro to it because this is actually a very hard piece to play hello Jurgen. hello hello welcome welcome thank you for dropping in it is a uh, not such time to speak I'm actually trying to get used to playing with a pick now. Uh, it's really rough. A pick is entirely different than my thumb, especially because I've kind of gotten used to uh, using my thumb so far. So we're kind of, we're in a, a minor bit of a pickle, but hey, good students and good learners always learn and uh, try to figure out different things. So this stream, we're just gonna kind of be exploring. I've done a lot of just finger work in general, but we're also gonna take a look at knobs. We're gonna take a look at different amps. We're gonna try to get some good tone up in here. What do you guys think? Sound like a plan?
excellent. Beyond, you know, trying to actually get the electric to hook up and to sound relatively decent, um, and on top of being just a little teensy weensy bit late, um, on top of not being able to actually make my cool entrance, you know, where I'm just like... that today has been pretty okay it's been pretty okay ah uh, yeah just just a little just just a tiny bit frankly there's a lot for me to learn as well about how electric guitars work by the way is this sound good for you guys Is it too loud? It's too loud? Okay, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me try to actually... Oh! Oh! Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Alright. So we've got a couple of things to go through. Just to kind of... Get a better feel of it. I just kind of keep again uh, a lot of the electric is kind of just playing around with different settings to kind of get the tone that you're looking for uh so i recently picked up my electric and an amp and i don't know how to use either one super duper well a lot for me to learn um <laughs> do you see if it helps i actually took a nap too because I did not sleep much. So, I feel exactly where you're coming from. Well, thank you for dropping in, and I hope that you have a fun Dungeons and Dragons uh, session. And thank you, thank you for the compliment on the guitar. <laughs> Hi, TJ. Welcome, welcome. I hope your day has been awesome. Palasam. Ah! I'm so sorry, you guys. That was me going over my pickups. I'm still trying to just learn how to maneuver an electric. I won't lie, I'm not that strong or that big. So, um, it's, uh, kind of... Oh, stop, stop. Why are you being so picky? So it's kind of um, tough for me to keep it stable while I'm also trying to pull up the proper tabs for some of these songs. I am so sorry for all of that white noise. No, I'm too small. Oh, there you go. I got it. Okay, this is a significantly 
simplified version, but it says to tune down a half step. Let's see, four, four, two. Let me, ah, uh, no, none of that noise. Come on, cut that out. There you go. A six, five. Where'd you get that from? Oh, wait, yeah, right. Sorry. Uh, yes, yes, I am six, five. Oh, these are the different guitars playing it. And then they go. This might be a lot harder than I had thought. Uh, yeah, so I, I happened to, uh, to end up, okay, so I'll tell you guys, I really, really wanted an electric. Um, I'll tell you the full story. So what I ended up doing was I actually pulled some of my old Dragon Quest games a series that I actually really like, and, you know, okay, can you, like, not constantly? Can you just, like, chill? Okay, thank you. Um, so, I, there's actually this local game store that is generally super duper nice about, um, good deals, good values, all that stuff. And I ended up taking in my Dragon Quest collection for a decent chunk of change. So I ended up having the spare, hello, lost, to pick up a, um, well, to pick up an electric. So I went into the store, and at first I was going to pick up an Epiphone um, bass guitar. And, you know, I kind of gave it a try. It was kind of nice. It was this nice light blue or more like this nice blue guitar, Cerulean, really. And it was, it was cool. I liked it. But unfortunately, I ended up getting a lot more fret buzz than I had initially wanted. And the feel of it was just so plastic, you know? Um, so yeah, I was kind of aiming for a Les Paul. Um, now, here's the part that kind of gets really cool. I was actually able to take it back and, you know, I looked at other guitars and I just couldn't decide. I couldn't decide. And at the very back of this little nook of guitars, guess what was sitting there? So what was sitting there for a really good price, actually, was a Gibson LPJ Cherry, um, practically in almost like excellent condition like there's like two scuffs on this thing and i was like wait i actually can oh potentially be the proud owner of a real gibson <laughs> and because 
so so like I basically did not spend much for it at all in comparison to like the normal asking price. This this guitar is worth like maybe it's worth like between eight to nine hundred dollars up to like a thousand and I was able to get it for like half that. <laughs> um because the previous guitar did not work for me very well and I had a lot left over and all of that stuff. Um don't get me wrong, they let me touch a true Gibson and holy gosh, I couldn't lift it. I could not touch and hold a real Gibson, but gosh, it sounded beautiful and in my hands oh so no, I was actually very blessed and very lucky to have got this Gibson for a very good deal that was essentially just a little bit more than the Epiphone. Um, but no, it's this cherry wood finish, and I, I love it. It's beautiful. Um, with, like, black and all that stuff. Actually, you know what? I'll just show you guys a picture. Let me just pull up a picture of this gorgeous guitar here. That way I can, um, I can brag just slightly. <laughs> I am, I'm not kidding. I'm so happy with this. Again, I was just blown away with the fact that I got something for such a good deal. Oh, my throat is killing me. So, you'll have to forgive me. I don't mean to I, I don't mean to make it seem like I'm like rich or anything. I'm definitely not, but um but I was certainly like happy with it if that makes sense. Oh, I mean of course that makes sense. Okay. So I'm here. Let me just um this over yeah so this is the guitar and it, it's beautiful that's it it's so clean it's slow it's so oh wait hold on no sorry this is the guitar that one had um i forgot what those pickups are called but the one this is the one that i have with the humbucker um and it's gorgeous that cherry finish that's just beautiful red deep red color with the black on it oh i'm i'm not kidding i got i love out. I lucked out on my first guitar. Huh. Hello. Oh, wait. Hold on. Sorry. You guys are saying hello to each other. So, no. And hi, Pew. How is your day going? I'm just talking a little bit about the guitar. Um, so, no. It's, it's just, it's awesome. I'm so happy um, with how, with my first one, again, I thought I was going to get an Epiphone, um, Gibson, or Les Paul, excuse me, um, and I ended up walking away with my first Gibson, <laughs> um, so there's the story for you guys, well, uh, you see, what what acoustic are you talking about? I don't know. I don't. I don't, uh, I, don't uh, I, I, I don't. I don't know what what acoustic. You know, it's just uh, it's just such a long neck that I can't actually you know show the entire thing. So yeah, what, what, what acoustic, right, guys? Hello, everybody. I'm so glad that you all are saying hello and conversing with each other. This is what I want. I want you to be... I, um, uh, no, Pew. As a matter of fact, that little bit of buzzing that you hear, well...
is a little, well, TC, my acoustics name is, um, it is Sunny. This new guitar, because she is a cherry one, her name is Scarlet. So I've got Sunny behind me and I've got Scarlet in my hands right now. So everyone say hello to Scarlet. Yeah, I, seriously, again, I scored on this one. And I also got a uh, Mustang LT25 Fender amp, which I know some of you might decry sacrilege. Why putting, um, why put, um, a, uh, a Gibson with a Fender amp? And it's, it's because I had to still be mindful of how much I had to, you know, spend so please for those of you out there do not do not crucify me for using these two pieces of equipment together <laughs> As you can see, she's a little bit shy, but we're out. I swear, I have to start removing all these hazards in my, in my space. It is so difficult for me to kind of freely move around without accidentally bumping Scarlet into things, and I don't want to hurt Scarlet. But she says hello. All right, let's swap this up a little bit, shall we? Yes, Bull, I am a connoisseur of glasses, so I've collected many over my time. Ooh, that one might be a little too hard for you guys, sorry. see if I can actually pull this one off. Is this a little too much for you guys? Please, just let me know so I don't, like, blow out your ears. Smoke on the water. is whether or not it's too messy sounding, like it's just too gritty. And like, you can't hear anything other than just BRAAAAAAAH! <laughs> Where's my smoke on the water tab?
Okay, so it's five, three, three, five. Is this? This doesn't sound right. you guys i just don't understand how this uh oh best part it's still coming along i have not had a lot of time to uh practice best part just yet so how is this supposed to work Um, smoke on the water. Okay, okay. Maybe I'm just forgetting how to actually play this song. Just had to actually look up one that made sense. A lot of this just didn't make sense. Oh, awesome. Okay, I've gotten even better. Okay, now I'm understanding. Now I'm understanding. Okay.
Good morning, Vlad. Where are you from, by the way, that ends up having it be morning, if you don't mind me asking? Um, all right, but I've got it. I finally got it. Um, um, it is going very well, though. Right now, I'm just trying to actually get the chords down for, uh, smoke on the water. Let's see if I can get this a bit better. And then there's some chords that go with it. I think that's what this was. Okay, now I think I can actually do this correctly. Okay, so the genre that I like the most, that's hard to say, that's hard to say. So I do like a little bit of everything. I don't have a particular favorite of, um, of you know, the type of music that I like, but I do like rock when it comes to electric guitars. And frankly, what I'll probably be focusing on more often than not are rock songs. So, um... It's just going to be a lot of development and a lot of persevering and trying to figure out how do you know. Actually pick, actually do things properly and correctly, but, 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 here is something that I absolutely want to assure you on. I will get it down. And the moment that I get it down, I will have awesome guitar, quick fingers, all of that stuff. It's just, it's, it's just a matter of time. It's, it's just a matter of time. And, and you know what? I, I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez, I'm stumbling. I'm stumbling. But, no, um, I would say, let's see. Rock, I like jazz, I like a lot of different things.
Chesty. Toasty, I got something cool to show you. Like I promised. Seven Nation Army, sure thing. That's one of the first things I ever learned how to play. Not quick with my pick. Okay.
so a couple of things that I was trying, there were actually the hammer-ons and the pull-offs that I told you guys about. They're a lot more difficult than I had originally anticipated because, you know, I have to kind of, you know, go... What I'm essentially trying to do is ensure that um, I don't have to pluck more than once, so it allows me to get a certain level of speed without um, having the excessive amount of speed inside of my... Um, Hello, Krivali! Hello and welcome, welcome! Thank you for stopping in! But it allows me to hit a certain level of speed without having a certain level of uh, skill with my picking <laughs> I feel like the best way for me to actually um, get my picking to be really, 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 really fast is uh, Thunderstruck. Let's do it. Let's, let's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take on this really, really extremely powerful um, set of notes by Angus Young and see if I can handle it. Yes, thank you, Bo. It is Thunderstruck. Um, so, or at least a attempt at Thunderstruck. And thank you, Krivalia. I'm so happy to hear you say that. That's so sweet. All right, let's try the harder part of this. Okay. <laughs>
Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is a hard song. There, there is some speed here that I don't have yet, but... <laughs> That's not quite Thunderstruck. It's all about, you know, doing the practices, doing the warm-up. So I'm actually going to start doing something called the spider here shortly. The spider is actually a bit of a um, very extensive finger exercise. And as I was told by my teacher, the best way that I'm going to learn and get better is by consistently trying to almost improvise. Improvise on it. So, you know... Um, Carvalia, if you are interested in playing guitar, I would tell you it is never too late to start. I have only been playing guitar for about two to three months now, and um, you know, it's 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 a journey. Every instrument is a journey. So never ever 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 feel like it is too late to start playing a musical instrument because I guarantee you that that mentality is just going to end up getting you into a situation where you just, you know, feel like, oh, I can't do it. It's too late. Stuff like that. And then regret. No, you can always, 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 always start whenever you want. Never let anyone tell you otherwise. Okay. Um, piano is actually, so, Cravalia, um, my, uh, guitar instructor actually had let me know that I started with, um, like that I made a lot of really good progress and granted I practice like a couple hours a day. So I try to, so I try to like pull ahead really early <laughs> and then I kind of lost time, but, um, piano really translates super well to guitar. So I was originally a piano player myself. I actually still have my keyboard behind me and I have a bunch of Zelda songs that I'm planning on going through and trying to learn so I can like put on a little bit of a show for you guys every now and then. Um, but this right here, this electric guitar has been a lot smoother for me because I already have finger stretch capabilities thanks to playing piano for so long. So, 
Skills translate over between musical instruments. And one thing a lot of people don't realize is that music theory translates over regardless. So even if you, um, even if like you started as a trombone or something, you'll always be able to understand the differences between pitch, um, you always understand what scales are. You always understand different ways to kind of different musical terminology, um, which always translate over. Of course, learning a new instrument is learning how to use your tool completely differently, but skills have the capability to transfer over. So please, Carvalia, if you really want to go out, pick up an acoustic for like 50 bucks and then just start practicing. Just, just get right into it. Don't let anyone stop you from learning how to play the guitar very well. Let me also say this, by the way, you guys. Oh, hold on, my humbuckers are getting messed up. Let me also tell you guys something. So, most of the time, All of these people that are just technically very skilled at the guitar, like you see a bunch of different guitar players on YouTube, you see a bunch of different guitar players streaming, all that stuff, that are really, really good at it. It's, they're not born that way, right? And no, it's not because they started at the age of 10 or eight or six, it doesn't matter. Yes, by all accounts, if you start sooner, you get to practice more. A lot of things people don't understand are these people that are so good at the guitar at the age of like 20 have been practicing for practically like 10 years, if not more. You know, we are all like, oh, kids, you know, they're just children. They know they learned. They learned a lot. In our adult years, we have a lot more responsibility, so we can't spend three hours after school practicing on our guitar to master a couple of techniques like we would hope, um, which is why it takes so much longer for us to see the same progress that we'll see in a child. So that being said, what I'm basically trying to get at is it's, it is a form of a talent, but it's not innate, okay? There are very few people in this world and again, I, I like the use of the word savant because you have to base, you, there's no way you're going to like come straight out of good old mom and just immediately be able to, you know, play Thunderstruck. Like, boing, 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 boing. no, that's just not going to happen. Um, it never will. And the people that that does happen with very, very slim chance. Um. A lot of these people that are so good have been practicing and pretty much dedicated all of their time to mastering this instrument. So they feel so comfortable. It's like breathing. You know, if you think about it, um, we had to learn how to walk. <laughs> As babies, we had to learn how to walk. And we didn't just walk perfectly fine because it's natural. No, it took practice. Everything takes practice. There are very few things that are innate. Yeah. Thank you, Pew. That's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Put in the amount of time and you will learn everything you need to know. If you basically did things for eight hours a day for a month, you would probably get in. And I don't mean just, you know, messing around and goofing off on the guitar like... Let's be honest, in these guitar streams, I probably spend like an hour goofing off and an hour actually practicing. Um, if you spend eight hours just pure practicing on something you want, you will be insane in a month. And people will be like, oh, your practice is so crazy. Yeah, because that's all you did. You pushed yourself. You made yourself better. You forced yourself to understand the content. Do you think I learned how to, you know, do this stuff? Okay, so it's actually relatively simple, I'll admit, but 
I don't think that it, not everyone could just come out and immediately go. And you see, I messed up like crazy right there. I have only played that for an hour. Um, some of my interpretation of it comes from my previous musical knowledge, and I was just dedicated. No matter what happens, happened, I kept trying, I kept trying, and eventually it started becoming smoother and smoother and smoother. Now, here's something that people don't tell you. Speed does not teach. As a matter of fact, the way that you're actually going to be able to play things really quickly is you set a tempo and you follow it. Each time you increase it and eventually you're going to be hitting a speed that's like three times what you initially started at. Um, there are no guarantees and there is no such thing as someone just immediately pops out as a amazing person. All of these artists that you see on Twitter, they did not just pop out and they're amazing. No, um, even if they're young, it's because, again, they probably spent so much time actually drawing and learning skills while they were in school. So, like, not just doodling. We're talking, like, actually drawing. Um, and then it, it, everything is a learned skill. I think the reason why I'm hammering this in so harshly is because a lot of what I see online nowadays is people will use the word talent. You know, oh, this person is so talented, talented, and you're not wrong. However, the problem is the connotation of the word talent nowadays is almost like, oh, um, I'm naturally just really good at this. I was born good at this, but that's not what it is. It Anything can be considered a talent, but talent and skill are actually relatively interchangeable. You can say someone has um, innate talent, but frankly, you know what I think is the biggest innate talent of all? The interest and desire to learn. So if you are interested and you have a desire to learn, to push yourself, to teach yourself, on, you know what, you guys, I'm going to take off these sunglasses. I think I look goofy. Uh, hi, LFG. So if you have the desire, the innate need to learn, um, and just the in general interest, I would say you already have an innate talent for whatever it is that you're interested in. You just have to seize it. You can't just not, you know, do something along those lines. You have to seize that moment. All right, you guys? So no matter what happens, if there's something you want, in the words of Shia LaBeouf, you've just got to really do it. Um, and you've got to dedicate yourself to it. No one is going to keep you on top of something. You have to keep yourself on top of it, if that makes sense. But yeah, thanks, Toasty. And you guys, if, if you really want to get back into music, if you really want to get into any kind of musical instrument, do it. Do it. There are people out there who know like drums, guitar, bass, um, and something else all together. And they're good. And all of those instruments... There are people out there with like that are good at like twelve string guitar instruments, and I'm like, what the what the goodness heck? I can't even play a six string well. How am I supposed to play a twelve string well? Heck. But that's just because every instrument is played differently. Nothing is the same. Yeah, I had double glasses on <laughs> because um I just uh ended up um. You know, not entirely sure. 
So I uh, just kind of put things on top because I wanted to look cool for my first electric guitar showing and stuff like that. But unfortunately, it didn't go as cool as I thought. I didn't have like flashing, you know, strobe lights and all that cool stuff. Um, so yeah. But, Bolt, hey, 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 listen, there are very affordable ways to pick up an instrument. Like, I don't, I know, uh, maybe, like, I can't really say, like, a hundred or so dollars or something. That's, like, a general entrance fee for any instrument. It's not the best quality, but, you know, um... So LFG, I am not entirely sure what you're talking about right now. Um, I'm a little lost as to what you're saying, but um, it's good to see you, and I hope that you're doing okay. But anyways, uh, <laughs> thank you, Pew. I try my best to... To be cool. <laughs> I try my best to be as cool as some of the other, as, as the kids would say. Oh, you're a lefty? Ah, okay. I know that lefty bass guitars are a bit harder to find, so, um. Wait, really? I sell guitars at my local guitar store being cheaper because they were lefties. So, I don't know, maybe I don't know any better. But yeah, if you guys want to do something, seize it, please. Please, go out and make it happen. Um, pick up a new, pick up a, I don't know, pick up a triangle, pick up a kazoo, pick up a harmonica, pick up a flute, pick up a horn, pick up a violin, pick up anything that you want. I mean, I was torn between so many instruments. I started with the piano. I tried out the viola. Uh, it wasn't for me. I tried out the saxophone. It wasn't for me. I tried out the violin. It just wasn't for me. And I just kept trying different instruments over and over and over again. Um, but I always knew that the string, a string-based instrument, was kind of in my heart. So I tried the violin... I, I remember, like, I kept trying the violin and viola, but it just wasn't right. It was elegant. It was pretty, but it's like, I I just didn't get the satisfaction I wanted. And then I finally decided, you know what? I want to try a guitar. I'm going to try a guitar. And ever since then, I can't stop. I can't stop playing a guitar. <laughs> Um, it is probably my favorite instrument so far, and I think that eventually I found my instrument. <laughs> I found the instrument that I want to be better at. The hard part is, you'll never actually also know what proper technique looks like. Even now, I'm trying to figure it out too. I noticed that to stretch very far, I kind of have to adjust my thumb and twist my wrist and it's very uncomfortable. I was under the impression that I build muscles in my wrist and maybe I am and I just don't know. But um, you're, I'm pretty much... Um, uh, yeah, Pew. Okay, so sure. Uh, I was renting a viola, and I was renting a violin, so those are gone. My piano is, uh, gone now. It's out of my reach, um, and it's severely out of tune. I now have a keyboard that sits behind me, just as kind of a representation of the instrument that I spent a lot of time on, 
as well as the fact that I would like to try to get back into it in some capacity, but my, my attention has been very focused on my guitar as of late. Um, Sunny, my first acoustic, she's right behind me. She's my first acoustic guitar, so I'd never get rid of her. And this is, and like I said, Scarlet, my most recent purchase is my Gibson Les Paul. Um, and... Since she's my first electric guitar, I'll probably never get rid of her either. Um, she'll probably be one of my go-tos for the longest amount of time. So there you guys have it. Um, let's see. What other instruments? I also said saxophone. I was just renting a saxophone too. So I don't have that one anymore either. Um, it's... It'd be interesting if I still kept all of those instruments. It's just... I eventually found myself... Well, again, with everything being rented, I eventually found myself more attracted to... Finally selling in another, uh, place. Yeah, you are correct, Pew. If you think about it, a decent violin, 300. A decent viola, 300. Um... An actual piano is like thousands. Um, a decent, let me think. Um, a decent saxophone, 500. And then we get into guitars and holy gosh, I mean, don't get me wrong. The other instruments have very high prices too, but I'm just more privy to guitar prices because the other stuff I kind of did when I was younger this is kind of like the first one that I explored. Um, but... <laughs> TC, no! <laughs> no, guys! Guys, Hayami does not condone stealing. Please do not steal products from your local store. Please purchase them if you plan to get a product. If you plan to... Um, just please, please, you guys, please. Please, 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 please do not seal. Actually buy the product because you never know. It, it, okay. So like, I know people will say, oh, it's just Walmart, you know, who cares? But it's like, the problem is, is that it doesn't actually affect the, um, this is actually just a little bit of business understanding. It doesn't affect Walmart as a whole. It affects that location. Once that Walmart begins to feel like that location has too many incidents or too many problems, they may feel like it is a negative place to be and they'll just close it down. So they won't lose any money. Um, they'll just get rid of a bunch of jobs. So that might be a little bit serious, but it's like, I just, I, I have a lot of different reasonings as to why I say, let's, let's, let's just, let's be decent Let's be people that follow certain established things. Even if we don't get caught, there's a morality behind it. And here's the reason why. It'll end up affecting um, people around you. I, pew, uh, I plead the fifth on that. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. You know, I'm not perfect. Definitely when I was younger, I've done some stuff that I'm not proud of. We'll never get into those stories, though. So. Um, but I think the mark of growth and being a good person is not what you have done. It's about what you will do moving forward. So, no, Pew! <laughs> Until we do another Wheel of Punishment and you guys are allowed to ask me some questions... I will not be sharing any of these embarrassing stories. Um, no, I'm not a villain either. <laughs> you guys, things don't just fall out of the sky. Don't, no, 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 no. But yeah, I know everyone will look at a price tag and they'll feel that urge and temptation. Um... And it's so 
hard too. Like you think about it and there's even gray areas with it too, you know, like if someone can't feed themselves and can't get food stamps in time, would you be unhappy if they, <laughs> okay, this is, this is a bit of a strange question. It's one that might be a bit heavy, but imagine if someone was not able to actually feed themselves and won't get food stamps in time, and they're looking at a week or two before they can eat something. Do you think it's appropriate for them to just, you know, granted, hold on. So let me actually lay it out by, I think if you're willing to ask for help from strangers, it's a very difficult place to go just because in terms of like, some people have a certain amount of dignity that they want to preserve. But like, if someone were to like, swipe a thing, a loaf of bread, it's hard, right? You, you'd say it's wrong immediately, but at the same time, circumstances are different. Now, if like you're perfectly well off and you decide to swipe like a couple of things, yeah, I'm going to be like, huh, maybe you shouldn't, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you have a level of circumstances where you feel like something should be understood? I know this might be a bit of a heavier topic, but I like to actually discuss some of these situations with you and have a bit of like a, where does your moral compass lie? Uh, not even moral compass, hold on, excuse me, because that would, ex that would say like right and wrong. Where does your feelings lie on these situations? Oh, thank you, Pew. I... I just, honestly, I just, uh, I just like to observe and I, I keep myself somewhat informed, um, but not super duper informed. I try not to go super duper far. And TC, um, I'm not sure how heavy, heavy it is. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, that's. I just kind of share a little bit about my stances, you know, it's because there's no such thing as a guidebook to being a kind hearted individual. There is no such thing as a um, set forward standard. I can't just go to the local Barnes and Noble and say, hey, can I get a book? Um, Alright, TC, no worries, no worries. But I'm not gonna go to Barnes and Noble and just be like, hey, can I get a book by Amy Whitaker on how to be a good person? Because then it's like, are you are you really you know, following a book and just following a certain steps of rules? Um, you know, it's hard. So Pew, that's no actually. I have not encountered many beggars in my area. What And I don't fully understand the circumstances, but I have encountered some beggars in my area that are wearing, like, really, really high-end clothes. Like, the brands that I see while they're begging for money kind of shocks me, which, um, so I kind of live nearby a college, and a lot of times I'm like, I really hope this isn't just a college student that want some extra money um, because you know to me that's lying and I don't I don't like lying I don't I think that lying is not a good thing to do I feel like you should be honest and forward with everything that you do in life now you can reserve to tell certain things like again um People barge in and start asking where you work and stuff like that. Um, no, that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, you can't. You shouldn't just be honest there. You can be like, no, I reserve the right. But to lie, it's it's different. <laughs> Paul, you see what I mean? It's it's confusing. It's conflicting. I I I get it. I'm not telling. I'm not saying like if you don't. If you need to like beg for assistance or ask for um help 
Yeah, Crivali, sure. Go ahead. I I don't mind. Feel free to uh virtually hug me. I am just an anime girl on the screen, so I can't like return it. I don't have arm tracking. But um uh we can just say that I, I can give you a hug back. Um but yeah, Pew, so the government has a decent bit of assistance here in the in the States, I don't know everything. Um, just because I always tried to work and make sure that I had some form of income so that I could at least take care of like feeding and stuff. And don't get me wrong, I received health in my uh, help in my life too. Um, we all need it. It's just how you move forward from there. Yes, Krivali, I try to keep myself at a nice, warm, toasty temperature because that is the best way to give off good energy and, um, what's it called? Warm vibes. So, uh, yeah, I keep myself warm and toasty. I think. Yes. I I keep myself warm and uh and and toasty. Wait. Hang on. That's rough. Um No, I'm not over here like ah, I'm stalking Toasty. Hoo hoo hoo. That'd be that'd be kinda weird, don't you guys think? Like, you know, Toasty just turns around and she just sees me, but um No, frankly. I wouldn't even be able to. She's made it very clear. She she she's the man, so if I were to just like spook her like that, she'd she'd like attack me, I don't know. Um, I, uh, no, no, I said nothing of the sort to make me, uh, to make me a, a person violating space and boundaries. Red velvet cake. Guys, what do you guys think? Do I smell like red velvet cake? Do you guys think I would smell like red velvet cake? Mm, I smell more like, um... Mm, not red velvet cake, but uh, I try to keep myself smelling like flowers. I like flowers, so I try to keep a very simple, soft smell. I can't really tell because I'm used to my scent. As weird as that sounds. Um, but I don't really smell like cake. I tried to get into baking and it just it didn't work out, unfortunately. Um, and the only reason why is because I couldn't eat all of the sweets I would make. Um, favorite flower. Right. So, TC, my favorite flower has probably got to be the... Um, Sakura cherry blossom. Very beautiful flower that grows on a tree. I love it. Um, my favorite rose is a white rose. Um, yeah. And honestly, though, the cherry blossom is also tossed up with a hibiscus. Hibiscus are gorgeous as well. Now, in terms of baking, right? So, yeah, I had a stand mixer. I had all that stuff. And I loved making banana nut bread, white macadamia chocolate chip. And oh my gosh, those white macadamia chocolate chip were so good. So, they were like, they were soft. It's, it's, okay, so this is how I can explain it. They were so soft. They were essentially like freshly baked cookie dough while still being cooked with that texture. That's how soft they were. And they were so, so good. Um, 
Um, and I, I tried my hand on a lemon meringue cake and it was okay. It just, it kind of got a little messy, but I remember when I brought it into work at one point, it was like gone. People like the lemon meringue cake I made. Um, um, Oh, banana nut bread toasty. Okay, I'll have to make you some banana nut bread one day. Um, roses, I understand why that's the case, because thorns and then the beauty of a rose. I get it. Um, pew, I have actually never tried that. I might think about it. The only, again, the only problem with baking sweets is, uh... TC, what, what sweet would you like me to bake for you? Um, the only problem with baking sweets, though, is that I make a nice batch. Like, I have, like, a multiple dozens of white macadamia chocolate chip cookies. And I can't eat all of them. And I can't just feed, uh, I, I, I can't just give them all away because not everyone wants them. So, what I just do is I just... I stopped baking after a while. Um, I think the last time I did was last Christmas. I made um, snickerdoodles, chocolate chip, and white chocolate macadamia nut cookies. Never made a cream brulee, but I would be willing to try it. Baking is nice. It's just, again, I would need someone that I could feed all of my baking to. <laughs> And then I'd start baking again. Because there is something so pleasing about the beautiful smells and getting the baking temperatures just, just right. All right, Toasty. I, I, I'll just, I'll just shovel all of my sweets into your mouth. <laughs> we'll start with my cookies. Um, and Casey, sure, you can have all my cookies too. Then, if you guys would eat all my stuff, then I could start baking cakes. I could start putting my hand towards actually, um, making cakes. Lucky you, lucky me. I can finally start feeding my, uh, my sweets away. It worked when I was at an apartment complex because there's so many people. Um, ah, TC, I'm sorry. I don't make mine sugar-free. Um, I'm not very good at understanding certain things. I just follow the recipes. All right. Tacey's trying to get ripped. He's trying to get abs. He's trying to get like super defined and super muscular so he can pick up bowl bridal style and take him home with him. Um. <laughs> no, don't. Next stream is about making cookies. No, I, I I don't think I'm ready to become a, what, what was it that we said? A skin tuber? I don't think I'm ready for that. Oh, look at that. Well, even I'm getting a little, a little flustered over that comment from Bull. Like I told you, Bull and TC here are like the best couple. I bet, like like we said uh, before, Bull is, uh, I think, to our understanding, Bull might be a gray fox. Um, and then he's got, like, TC, who's, like, a ripped man. So we've got, like, just two, two like, attractive, handsome man to get men together. Um, I'm not, I'm not a chef, really. I'm not that good at cooking. Um, I'm... Better at baking than I am at cooking. But again, baking can make the meals, lasagna and such, but cooking makes certainly more. I wish I was a lot better at cooking over baking. Um, but that one's kind of hard to say.
<laughs> Sorry, you guys, about the guitar stream stuff. I, I was kind of, um, um, I was kind of distracted with all the talking. Yes, Pew, I took a brief moment at it, and I'm very sorry that I haven't spent more time on it. It is on my list. It's just I've been trying to sort a couple of things out right now. There's just a, to, to keep things brief, there is a lot of things going on in life, and I have not had a lot of time to really practice guitar or um, sing recently or do other things. I'm trying to kind of situate some life stuff out first but you know that i love to stream with you guys so regardless of what's going on in life i wanted to be here at least for a little bit of time um now tj in terms of what i can cook it, it's hard to say um i have i like hmm, i can make simple stuff so i can make like fajitas um I can make, um, smash burgers, yes, Oklahoma specifically. Um, I can make different kinds of pastas. Um, <laughs> I can make uh, a decent chunk of Asian cuisine, so I guess uh, some of the um, foods that come to mind are uh, hong shao rou, uh, essentially what is called, um, it's essentially braised pork belly. Very good. Um, I can also make um, barbecue pork buns, if you guys know what that is. Um, love those. Oh my gosh, the fluffiness and the flavor. Mm, delicious. Um, I cannot, I'm trying to think of other stuff I can make. but uh, Barbecue Korean meatballs. I can make some decent ribs. Um, and, yeah, oh, oh, I am so sorry, you guys. Ah, that's a crab in my knee. Ah, ah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, Pew, I like pork, too. Pork is a good, uh, good, good food. I like that. Um, anyway, Cece, so... Yeah, there are different kinds. So a smash burger, you know what a smash burger is. An Oklahoma smash burger is different. So, you know, you do it like a normal smash burger. But then once you've got down one side, you put very thinly mandolin sliced onions on top of that uh, side uh, that is still uncooked. Um, now, before you do that, of course, you want to season your meat. Season it very nicely because only one side gets the seasoning and all you do is salt and pepper. You flip that over with all the onions underneath. And so basically what happens is as you fry and caramelize those onions, the uh, the ground beef will both seep in meat juice and also end up having that caramelization kind of uh, almost smoke into that meat. Then you put on a slice of cheese and you let it finish, melt over. Um, in the event the cheese is not cooking or it's not cooking fast enough, you can uh, steam it slightly. So, you know, you just put a little bit of water, and then cover it with a, uh, a pot lid or something along those lines. Um, and there you go. That's an Oklahoma smash burger. I like to put pickles and mustard on mine, um, and it's delicious. So, <laughs> it's, it's, it's very simple. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't mean to <laughs> make you all hungry. I, I, I cook for you guys if, if you were all here. Like, if you all just showed up suddenly at my doorstep and were like, Hi, Yami, we're hungry. I'd be like, okay, come on in. I'll make dinner. I'll make lunch. I'll make some kind of breakfast. I... <laughs> Thank you, TC. Um, Crivali, I feel, uh, Crivalia, I feel like the reason why is a cream brulee probably utilizes a lot less expensive ingredients than, uh, burgers do. So, like, meat is just generally more expensive than, like, sweets, jam, and stuff like that. Um, or cream, in that sense. And then bread, it's... It's all about the materials that go into it, but let me think, what else do I have for you guys that I can make? I 
can also make um, hmm. man I am drawing a blank I guess like fried rice is another thing I make uh good teriyaki is something I like to make as well don't know how to make sushi oh I can make Nashville hot fried chicken and I I do a double dipped um, double dipped crispy Nashville hot fried chicken. And let me tell you, it's crispy. Um, just so I can make a, a crispy, uh, wait, you're telling me it was Hayami, not the shrimp who fried the rice. I'm so confused. Uh, like shrimp fried rice. Um, but no, uh, I can actually make some decent fried chicken just because I know the technique to get that crispiness. So a take on that is my crispy chicken sandwiches that I, I like to make occasionally, not all the time. Don't say that, TC. You're not stupid. You're not a stupid individual. Wonder Bakery is everywhere. It smells really sweet. Hi, Cap. How are you doing? We're just talking about foods and the many different things that we can, uh, we can, we can cook. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, oh, I know how to make, uh, well, I'm not super good at making enchiladas, but I can make some enchiladas. Um, fajitas. Tacos. Um. And I have experience with carnita, uh, carne asada, um, and stuff like that. I do make a relatively decent uh, ribeye steak. It's just salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic seasoning. Make sure it's well seasoned. Cook it to a um, temp internal temperature of 170, I think, and then reverse sear it on the... Um, uh, on a uh, cast iron pan, so. <gasps> That's awesome, Cap. Great, maybe now I can get my own anime. <sighs> ah, I don't know. I call it like I'm not a side character Desuga. <laughs> I don't even know what Desuga means. Um. I'm sorry, you guys. I didn't mean to make you all hungry. Rending. Okay. No, but I didn't mean to make you all so hungry. I just wanted to cha chair. I just wanted to share with you a couple of things regarding, you know, foods. Um, yeah, Cap, I do. I, well, I don't have a Roku TV, but I have a Roku, um, musical anime. <laughs> That'd be interesting if I was in a musical anime. Well, we'll have me in musical school and that'll be the entire anime. But there will always be like a main character that overshadows, so. Hi, Rock Ram Kumar. Welcome, welcome. You're never late here. It's always, you're always on time here at, uh, the little Hayami thing. Hayami streams. Alright, sorry about that, y'all. Instead of constantly bonking my guitar, I just wanted to put aside my, uh, guitar for a bit. All right, Toasty, see you around. See you at the Devourer Collab. Right, okay. Um, I gotta actually do this. So, you guys, um, I am... So, we are potentially going to... Um, what's it called? All right, I'm sorry. I just lost all my words. Okay, so, 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 so. Well, my stream is going to be ending here shortly. 
that does not mean it's actually going to be the end. So today I am going to be um, playing Devour with Toasty in uh, honestly like seven minutes here. So if you guys would like to come see us scream and be scared and run away and potentially cry, <laughs> please feel free to stop in. So Toasty is on twitch.tv. I am going to go ahead and drop her Twitch here for you guys um, so that you guys can potentially uh, say hello or potentially even drop in and, and hang out with us because we'll be... We'll be there. Um. Oh, thank you, Ram Kumar. I see all those hearts. I appreciate it. I always love hearts. Um, Shoku Geki no Soma. I'll write that one down. My favorite anime is Great Teacher Onizuka. But yeah. Um. All right. So that is Toasty's Twitch TV. Um, we will be playing Devour and maybe another game together. And I'll be, um, um, sure, <laughs> I'll cling for dear life to anything that, uh, whenever I'm scared, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But yeah, we'll basically be, um, hanging out and playing some spooky games and potentially playing other games. So that's her Twitch and that's where we will be. Uh, I will not be in full model movement. It's just going to be PNG, but you guys will hear me kind of talk, so... <laughs> Uh, feel free to drop in. Toasty's awesome. She plays a lot of um, cozier games, League of Legends, Overwatch, Hollow Knight, all sorts of different stuff. And she's uh, she's always a hoot and holler to talk to. So we she's she's here a lot. We love her. Um, my mic cuts off. Oh, oh, sorry. Thanks for letting me know, Marasa. Um, no, no, we're not both playing right now, but we will be. My mic cuts off a bit. Hold on. Okay, that might be better. But yeah, so just feel free to stop in if you guys want. If you guys are interested in a little bit more Hayami. But without further ado, we are actually coming close to that time. And the reason why I might be ending just a teensy weensy... Um, oh, <laughs> all good, Marasa. All good, Ram Kumar. I am actually about to close up for the stream, so you're perfectly fine. But yeah, um, I, because there might be a little bit of time to set some stuff up, um, I am going to go ahead and actually end us a little bit early. Um, so we have actually come to that time where we end up saying goodbye. But that doesn't mean it's forever. I'll be here tomorrow. In case I don't see you guys tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, then I hope you have a great rest of your week. And of course, I always hope you have a great rest of your day. You guys are awesome, and I always enjoy spending my time here with you. So, I hope to see you all another time. And the reason why I never say goodbye for sure is because I know we'll see each other again. All right, everyone. Without further ado, Take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.